Hey everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Review Channel. It's been a long old time since we did a State of the Watch collection. I could probably have done one almost every single month last year because my collection went up and went down as the year went on. But this time last year, I think we did one and it was probably the f least number of watches that I'd ever had in a state of the watch collection, except maybe going right back to the start. I think this year is going to be the biggest number of watches I have ever had in a state of the watch collection or have ever owned at one time. And if you know me from the live streams and from this channel, I don't like to have a big collection of watches. My collection aims have never been to have a large quantity collection, just more of a quality collection of watches that I wear a lot. So I did go off on certain tangents this year, but I probably will be shedding a lot of these watches or maybe half or more of these watches during this year. So let's flip the camera around and go through the watches and then let me know what you think. Okay, before I get started, there is a couple of watches that you won't see on here. Those are the ones that are on my district store. This is my casual watch reviews store. This is me selling the watches direct to you. If you're interested in any, check out the store. I've also put some other accessories and memorabilia on there as well for you to check out and you'll see some of these watches will end up on there as well you are buying direct from me i'm directly posting it out but you are covered by their guarantee if anything goes wrong let's kick off the state of the watch collection with the heavy hitters this is my date just so this is the most expensive watch that i currently own it's a rolex date just 41 mil with the mint green dial smooth bezel on the jubilee this is just a fantastic watch i think it's a great size at 41 millimeters let me just try this on to show you i know i get a lot of comments on the video about this about the size but i think this size is perfect i think the larger date just look more contemporary and the smooth bezel as well gives it more of a sporty look and feel without the flashiness of the fluted bezel i wear it regularly the only any improvements would be as i wish the crown was a little bit more in proportion with the case They've upped the case size, but the crown remains the same. It's in this uh, coffin box or service box because I don't keep these in the house. I keep them in a, a safety deposit box, and this is just an easier way to do it. These aren't officially Rolex ones. I just got these off eBay. The next one is my the remaining Grand Seiko. Started off during the course of this year, I ended up buying three Grand Seikos. One was a vintage and then I bought two modern ones. This is a 9F Quartz one. This is on Chrono 24. If you're interested in buying this, is on Chrono 24. I love the 9F Quartz movement. For me, this is gonna sound weird, but there's just something about the case size. I just find it to be, for my taste, a little bit too small. But this is everything. This is the pinnacle of Seiko's Quartz technology, GMT, fits really well much better than that other gmt i had which you know that i was not a fan of that spring drive not a fan of the way it wore this one does wear beautifully and i would keep it i just wish it was a tad tad bigger for my wrist right let's crack on we'll start with my most precious watches out of the whole collection and this is the watches that i inherited i won't go into these too much but this was my grandfather's casio lcd watch my other grandfather's timex watch and then my father-in-law's CWC watch. He wasn't in the British military. I bought this at an antiques fair and he really liked it. So very early on, I ended up giving it to him. And then unfortunately, when he passed away, it did come back into my collection. But this, uh, I'll always remember my association with uh, Alec and this watch. I won't go into them too much. I've covered them in multiple other videos. We've got the Mirage travel case there. This was sent, this case was sent in for review, but it's lasted three or four years and I use it pretty regularly and it still looks good. Right, let's jump into the G-Shock collection. This is your, the metal G-Shock. This is the actual metal G-Shock. This isn't an aftermarket case I've put on it. So it has that Bluetooth and all of that other cool stuff on it. I did replace the band with this band from AliExpress. I, I did a video on it, but the camera packed out halfway through. So I might have to reshoot that because it does add an interesting dimension to this watch that typically comes on, as you know, a metal bracelet. But this adds another dimension to it. They only have red, or they only had red at the time. I think this would look awesome on a black strap. I think this was $37, the watch strap. 
but as you can see, nice milled clasp there. You have to cut it to size. It was quite difficult to do because these, you have to unscrew these and they're quite stiff as it comes out the factory. But yeah, this the ultimate square G-Shock, I would say. Uh, I've had a few squares, but this is the, the ultimate one. Well, this isn't the ultimate one, it's the 5000U. But for the one that's got Bluetooth, I think this is the ultimate one at the moment. And G-Shock had a really exciting year last year, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they have what they come up with this year. This year, I went through a bit of a vintage G-Shock phase. Not sure why. I think it started off when I watched Mission Impossible, and this is the watch from Mission Impossible 3. There was a limited edition Mission Impossible 3 that had uh, MI3 on the back, but this was the same model that he used in the film. I replaced the band. It came on a bracelet-style band that wasn't very comfortable, so I replaced it with I replaced it with this rubber band and that seems to work really well great watch probably early 2000s I'm guessing next vintage G-Shock is one of the original MRGs this is a fully metal I don't know if these were available in the US this is a Japanese version I believe this is the 110 version but what was interesting about this when I saw it on eBay was it had the 30th anniversary of the Casio's workers union on the back I'm not sure the significance of that. I couldn't find a lot of detail online. Visually, it's smaller than you would expect from a from a G-Shock. It wears well, but visually it's smaller than, takes your eyes getting some adjustment to because you're used to seeing massive G-Shock, metal G-Shocks, but this one's quite cool. I believe this is Sapphire on, on there as well, which you see few and far between on G-Shocks currently, unless you get to the really high end. I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with these vintage MRG G-Shocks. This is the 220 stainless steel version. So this watch and this watch were both available in titanium as well. Luckily, this one did fit when I received it, but only just this is a, I've got a seven point, I've got a 7.2 to 7.5 inch wrist, depending on the temperature. But so I was lucky that this one just fit. Again, an MRG. This one has an interesting feature on it where it has a mode that is file. Um, I mean, I just put G-Shock on there. I'm not quite sure how useful that is. Maybe in a time before smartwatches that was useful, but I've yet to work out exactly how useful that was. But it's got an alarm. Uh, the stopwatch is interesting because it appears at the bottom. It's not its own separate mode, which I thought was interesting where it is, is its own separate mode on there. So this is quite cool. Wears well. Again, visually, it's a little bit smaller than the modern G-Shock, so that takes some getting used to, but everything works on it. Again, I probably will be selling this one on the store, so so keep an eye on the store. So let's carry on the vintage theme. This is the only, I would say, properly vintage watch I still have in the collection, and this is the Seiko Speed Timer. Not the, the Pogue version is the one with the gold. This has a dark blue dial. This was restored by John Sachs, who is a vintage Seiko restoration expert, and he did an amazing job of this. Seiko Todd, who you know from the live streams, he sourced, well, originally it was his watch and then he sourced other components for it as well. And this is an, and Larry over at Uncle's Uncle Straps sent me this bracelet to go on it as well. So overall, it looks like quite a modern watch, but it is a vintage one uh, and it works perfectly. A really cool watch, wears beautifully. I don't know why Seiko don't re-release a proper version of this. They've re-released a lot of other classic versions of their watches, but they don't seem to have done a proper version of this. They do have a watch that is still called a speed timer in the collection for sure, but they haven't kind of replicated this watch case. Dave over at Detroit Mint has a homage version of this over on his site which is probably the closest that you would get, but it doesn't have the inner rotating bezel. One of the really interesting things about this, not only does it have an inner rotating bezel, but to change the date and time, you push in the crown, um, so you see there, and depending on how far you push the crown in is how, how you quick set the date. I don't remember seeing that on any other vintage or new Seiko watch. I should say new Seiko watch, really, because it did come on. It was a synonymous with the 6139 movement, but a multifunctional crown on a mechanical watch I think is really cool. Next up is the Citizen Suki Yomai. I think I've said that right. This was the new release from last year. This one wasn't sent in to me by Citizen. I bought this with my own money. I got it on a Black Friday deal for $551. This is their first atomic 
timekeeping with the moon phase on it as well. I upgraded the strap to this Benito Centurini one from Holburn's. I wasn't a fan of the clasp on the titanium bracelet that it came with, but I think it looks pretty cool on that rubber strap. I paid about $5.50 for this. I think on Citizen's website, they're around about $8.50, although I do think there was a sale recently on them. But what a cool watch. Very technically advanced with that atomic moon phase, so you don't have to set the moon phase yourself. It looks like a chronograph, but it isn't. These, this bottom pusher just tells you whether it's received its reception or not. And then the top crown has other features when you're in the time setting, but this isn't a chronograph, even though it actually looks like it's got the chronograph pushers on there. Great watch. I'll be doing a review on this very soon. I'm not sure whether I'll keep it after the review. We'll see how we go. So far, liking this one a lot. I just remembered I do have another vintage watch in the collection. I forgot about it because my parents bought this over just a couple of weeks ago when they were visiting for Christmas. And they believe this was my British grandfather's Seiko Sportmatic. I have never saw him wore this wearing this watch before. I don't remember it. I don't ever remember seeing it. They don't remember seeing him wear it. But it it certainly has been well worn. It's got one of those stretchy bracelets on it with most of the, the gold has come off there. It appears to be working when you wear it, but it doesn't keep a charge. I think it needs to be serviced. I'm not sure how it, much it would cost to be serviced, but I think it needs to be serviced. I, I'm having a little think about this one, whether I'll get it serviced or just leave it as is. This next one isn't one of my watches. It's one of my colleagues at work who gave me this watch to see A, what I thought of it, and B, if I knew anybody that would want to buy it. This is made by Toomey, who make the luggage, the travel luggage. They Apparently, they did make, well, obviously, they did make watches because there's one here, but they made watches only for a short period of time. It's quartz, very well made, and apparently these were quite expensive at the time. They were $1,200 or something. It appears to be fully working. I, I think this red hand that is hidden behind there is, uh, is a, a hand for an alarm, but I can't seem to get the chronograph to work properly. I did at one time get it to work, but I just can't seem to get it to work, and because that this was only made for a certain time period. I cannot find any instructions or any YouTube videos on this, so maybe I'll sell it as is, but integrated bracelet on their butterfly clasp. It is a well-made quartz watch, but I just can't find any details on it. it. It keeps time. It appears to keep time, but as mentioned, I don't know if the chronograph's broken or what, and information is very sparse. So not one of my watches, but I thought pretty interesting to show you during this collection review. So next up, let's talk about watches that were kindly sent in for review that I did add to my collection. This might be a surprise that you're seeing a Christopher Ward here because if you've seen any of my Christopher Ward reviews, you'll know that they don't send watches in for reviewers to keep. Very few and far between that they'll they'll do that with. Maybe they do it with some of the larger YouTubers, but certainly not of a channel my size. And I was happy to send them back. I am a huge fan of the Christopher Ward brand. And so I was happy to review the watches, get access to Mike for those fantastic interviews that we've done on the channel. And I was happy to send the watches back I believe in what Christopher Ward are doing. They kindly offered to send me a watch for free. I, I believe they've had a, a new marketing direction and going up to wind up they did ring me and say hey we would really like to offer you a watch for free considering all of the reviews that you've done. I honestly did debate whether I should accept one for free because then I've lost that impartiality when I say that they've never sent me a watch for, for free but I thought, you know what, I have put a lot of hard work into it and for some reason, regardless of whatever, however you review Christopher Ward, whatever you say about Christopher Ward online, it's just a brand that people who don't like them just feel compelled to have to say something and I've never understood it because honestly, Christopher Ward, the best value watch brand you can buy. I will argue anyone on that point. The prices have crept up last year for sure, but still one of the best value watches that you can buy. This, I think, is the absolute pinnacle of Christopher Ward dive watch technology and I think it's one of the uh, watches that certainly doesn't get a lot of column inches there's not many YouTube videos on it and it was one that I thought long and hard about whether I wanted it or not and I am so glad that I did this is a titanium watch with a cosk solita movement in it so measured to cosk solita movement has the day and date you know I'm a huge fan of the day and date one of the best titanium bezels I have ever seen on a watch and I mean ever regardless of whether it's on a Pelagos or any of the other titanium dive watches that I've that I've seen and handled this is the best crown beautifully in proportion with itself 
a great titanium bracelet as you can see the amount of wear that this has had I've, I've worn this quite a bit and then they also have Christopher Ward's excellent divers extension on here so you can really ratchet it out has a nice milled clasp which is what's missing from this citizen this citizen needs a milled clasp I believe these are still under two thousand dollars and it's the only watch I believe in their catalog that hasn't yet had the makeover where they've removed the Christopher Ward name which unfortunately makes me feel like they might discontinue this from the range which is a real shame because this is a this is a proper dive watch thousand meter uh, water resistant helium escape wa valve even though it is a larger watch it wears so comfortably and beautifully they do another version of this which has a blue and orange color scheme uh, which typically I would go for that because I really love blue dial watches but I think this combination works works the best to be honest and it, this is probably one of the best Christopher Ward watches that I've owned and ever reviewed on the channel although I've not yet reviewed it so keep an eye out for that no secret there that I'm a Christopher Ward fan the next watch as well which was very kindly sent in for review and I also added to my collection is one of the up and coming brands I would say that I was most impressed with seeing at wind up and it was only by chance that my friend watch Chris over on the watch Chris channel introduced me to Jack Mason because quite honestly I thought they were a fashion brand and, and, and no joke I, I honestly thought they were a fashion brand so I never really looked at them closely but wow was I glad that I did I interviewed Peter the founder they are based in Texas the brand the watches are made I believe or, or assembled somewhere in Illinois, obviously using parts from all over the all over the world. This is their Espresso Strato timer using the new Miyota at GMT movement. Beautiful watch. Uh, Espresso timer is the color scheme on here. They they do some other color schemes. They also have an excellent ratcheting system, a glide lock system. You just ratchet it out, actually similar to a to a Submariner, not far off. But look how thin that uh, clasp is. I'll be releasing a review on this. It's probably actually all right or already out now. Their version of the Jubilee bracelet, quick release, very comfortable watch. Over Christmas, this is the watch that I've been wearing the most, to be quite honest. 40 millimeter or it might be 40.5 millimeter case. Wears beautifully on my uh, 7.2 inch wrist there. Another surprise, so I wasn't expecting Christopher Ward to, to give me this watch. There is no, con I don't give any brands contingencies that they have to send me watches in order to get reviews. This next one was also a surprise. Another brand that doesn't send watches in for reviewers to keep. They send review samples around for you to review them. And another one that I'm absolutely fine with is Citizen. So what I wasn't expecting was a gift to come from Citizen over Christmas and wow, what a gift it was. I had reviewed this watch previously, but look at this gold ProMaster box here. The team over at Citizen, who I've become quite friendly with over the last year, they are, they're a great team over at Citizen US, very kindly sent me the one of the most interesting watches that I think I reviewed last year, or certainly one of the most flamboyant ones, and that was the gold bullhead. So uh, they sent me the gold bullhead on the brown leather strap, I haven't actually worn this yet. I'm not quite sure the occasion when I would wear it, but I probably just need to take it out of the case and, and wear it. Has an alarm and everything, so a very grateful, totally unexpected gift from a Citizen in the US. A nice, very nice Christmas gift. So again, a big thank you to, to them. Uh, there was a couple of other watches that I reviewed this year that I did uh, end up keeping a hold of. One was the Wise Adamascus watch. Uh, I ended up giving that away for Christmas. So my dad now has that Wise Adamascus. And my dad was also the very happy recipient of another watch that I reviewed last year, which was the Casio Pro Trek watch. Uh, Casio were very good to me last year. They sent me some amazing watches over last year. So two more on the bench again very kindly sent in by the team over at Casio US these are two edifice models one in the the blue of the summer I would say integrated bracelet watches very thin 
uh, the review on this will be coming soon. I probably won't be adding these to my collection. They'll either end up on the district store uh, or I could give them away in a competition. So like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. You might see a giveaway for, for one of these, but definitely check out the district store as well. There'll be a few of these watches I think will end up on the district store over the, over the coming weeks. So if you are interested, then definitely keep an eye on that. You can sign up to district and follow me so you get an email every time I post some new stuff. So there we are. This is the state of the watch collection for the start of 2024. Very interested to see how this collection evolves. For me, there is probably a one or two more pieces than I would like here. I like to keep the collection quite tight. Uh, so I probably will, this probably will look very different when we do another state of the watch collection, either halfway through the year or towards the end of the year. As always, really, really appreciate you watching. Thank you to every new subscriber that subscribed last year. If you enjoy this content, a thumbs up is one of the easiest ways that you can support the channel. Or if you would like to become a channel member, $1.99 a month, would really, really helps out the channel and help support making this uh, content. Always really appreciate you watching. See you next time on Casual Watch Reviews.